Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, let's do better than that. Good morning. Amen. Whether you are here in person or joining virtually, today is truly a good day. Amen. I'm not saying that every circumstance is what we want it to be, but that does not mean that the day is not a good day. Today is a good day because this is still a day that the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. Amen. Today says that he watched over us on last night and then he stopped by to visit us on this morning. And who are we that he is mindful of us? That he would take a moment out of what he does in keeping this world together and stop by our house, touch us with a finger of love and wake us up on this morning. Amen. I'm just trying to say that we serve a personal God that took time to touch us personally on this morning that knows our personal address and then he knows our name and he called us by our name amen somebody i'm just trying to let somebody know that he is good and one more time his mercy has endured one more time his kindness and his favor has showered us in our lives all I'm trying to say is we have something to be thankful for. All I'm trying to say is we have a reason to praise the Lord. We have a reason to worship our God. Our attitude should be that of the psalmist that said, make a joyful shout to the Lord. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. It should be what the psalmist said, make a joyful shout. Amen. If you know he kept you from danger seen and unseen, stuff that you didn't even know was waiting around the corner for you, he kept you from it and kept it from you. Your attitude should be that of the psalmist that says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Oh, all you let serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We didn't make ourselves. We are his people. Isn't that good news? That in spite of ourselves, we are his people. The most high God, the maker and creator of all things, he says that we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So he said because of that, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and do what? Bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. Can I say it again? The Lord is good. Can I say it one more time? I don't know about you, but in my life, the Lord has been good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generation can somebody shout hallelujah let's get ready to give God some praise in this place Come on, hallelujah. good morning St. Paul it's funny the pastor said we uh, need to praise the Lord the song said we got a right to praise the Lord
for all the love and support that we received on yesterday in the homegoing celebration of my sister. I pray that God continue to bless and strengthen each and every one of you. And I just want to say that I'm privileged to be a part of the best church family in the world. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from one of my favorite scriptures, and I don't know why I constantly read it, but I love this scripture, just simply the 23rd Psalms, and it says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. But this verse 6 can apply. It simply says that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen, church. Good morning. It's good to be back in God's house once again. Amen. Giving God some praise in this place. So we do have a right to praise the Lord because he has been good to us and especially on this second Sunday in April because this is our anniversary, church anniversary 138 years, ain't that a blessing Lord have mercy we have a right to give him praise because 138 years at at 5960 Pleasant Hill Road on that hill we was in the cemetery on yesterday when they funeralized Sister Laura Johnson, our sister. It just made me think back on the history in, the, in that cemetery out there. And so I'm thinking about the history of all our members who've gone on before us. And I just, uh, by this being our anniversary, I just want to call some names out. Some of, some of the deceased ones who've gone on home before us. And uh, start with the ministers. Minister who, uh, before I go there, go to there, I want to thank God for my grandparents, Wiley and Bessie Coleman, and my mom, Minna Pearl Maxwell and Walter Lee Maxwell, my father. They are out there too. But we thank God for the ministers who've gone on home. Minister V.B. Brown, E.L. Fox, Harry, Harry Eccles Jr., Harry Francis, deacons who've gone on home, Edward Earl Howard, Frank Brown, Edgar Woods, Doc Kemp, Roosevelt Hammond, Bobby Webb, Todd Newsom, Bill Hall, Cato Curry. Some of the mothers are Doretha Kemp, Mother Newsom, Mother Williams. Are. These, were, these were just some of the ones who I could remember the name. There are others, but those were some of the ones, some of the names I just on my heart. And uh, some of the ones who are still living, some of our older members, some of our older mothers who are still living. Myrtle Brown. Reba Stone, Willie Mae Pettis, Ruthie Patterson, and some of the brothers who are still here with us today, T.L. Williams, Isaiah Williams, Ira Joe Williams, and Stanford Banks. We thank God for some of these names, but uh, I might not call, but don't charge it to my head, don't charge it to my heart. Just pray for me, okay? Because we can't, names, I might probably forgot some, but we know. We have such a great cloud of witnesses who've gone on before us, and they left a legacy that we should be following because they follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us go to God in prayer this morning. Pray along with us. Our Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. Truly, this is a day you have made. We are rejoicing. And we're glad to be here today. We thank you, O oh God, for all your manifold blessings, watching over us last night, waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right mind, bringing us, O oh God, together once again 
in this house of prayer. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for our pastor who's leading and guiding us in the way that you would have us to go. Continue to strengthen him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all our members here, oh God, at St. Paul. Father, just continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Help us to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Like Al said, oh God, you are our health, you are our strength. Father, you are our father, you are our shepherd. Father, you won't lead us into temptation, but when we are there, we know you didn't lead us there, but you will deliver us from the evil one because yours is the kingdom. Father, we thank you right now for all you're doing in our lives. You're so good to us. You're so merciful. You're so kind. You're so wonderful, oh God. Father, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every time shall confess that thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And oh God, we bow this morning, giving you thanks and praise for all you're doing. Father, you've been so good and so kind and so wonderful. Bless your holy name this day. Father, we thank you for all that you do on for our families, oh God. We lift up our children. Father, strengthen them, oh God, in your word. They might be taking the milk of your word now, but oh God, help them to take that milk until they can get the meat of your word. Father, we pray, oh God, that we will be a good example just like the ones who've gone on before us. Help us to be a good example to our children, oh God. Show them the light. Father, you said we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. Help us to be that light. Help us to be that salt because we can't do it without you. We need the Holy Spirit in us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of the living God. Rest, rule, and abide in us and work through us every day of our lives. Strengthen us where we're weak, oh God. Have mercy today. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. Father, go with us in this service. Bless us as we sing praises to your name. Bless us as the pastor come preaching your holy word. May your word take root in our lives that it might bring forth fruit. Father, so somebody might see our good works and we'll be careful to give you the glory, to give you all the honor and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on Zoom for virtual Sunday school where we rightly divide the word of God. Remember, Sunday school is the breakfast of champions. Text your name to 662-420-3543 to be added to the weekly prayer list. Then join us Monday mornings at 6 a.m. on the prayer line. The WOW Ministry along with Lawrence Swindle will provide two additional self-defense classes for women of St. Paul on April 12th and April 26th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Please register online if you plan to participate. Take me out to the ballpark for some fun, fellowship, and a Memphis Redbird baseball game on Saturday, April 27th at 3 p.m. Game tickets and buffet of burgers, hot dogs, and drinks included for $33 per person. Please register and pay online. Payments must be received by April 14th. If you have any questions, please contact Donald Walker at 901-461-6842. Young men ages 9 through 18 are encouraged to attend the Youth Mentorship Program sponsored by the Iron Men Ministry. Sunday, April 28th from 3 to 5 p.m. in the St. Paul Fellowship Hall. If you would like to be a part of the men's choir, please contact Brother Tony Bush at 615-462-1510. Men's choir rehearsals are the second Thursday leading to the second Sunday at 7 p.m. in the St. Paul Fellowship Hall. We are celebrating homecoming on May 5th, 2024, and would like everyone to purchase a homecoming t-shirt. The cost of the t-shirt is $20, and the money is due by April 22nd at 4 p.m. 
Payments can be made online and in the church office. Please do not forget to share the size you desire. Summer reading and math tutors are needed for grades 1 through 7 for St. Paul's Summer Camp, June 3rd through the 12th, 2024. Current or retired educators are preferred. Please email dcobbins at stpaulob.org if you're interested. Thank you for continuing to faithfully give your tithes and offerings. Clicking on this QR code will open the giving app. You can also give on our website, via text message, or in person using the tithe envelope. Thank you for choosing to worship with us, whether virtual or in person. We know that you could have chosen anywhere to worship, but you chose St. Paul. If you're new to St. Paul, we'd like to connect with you. Please complete the guest card given to you by the ushers and return it as you leave. Again, thank you for worshiping with us and have a blessed week. Amen, amen, amen to all of our guests um, that are here with us on today. We just thank God for you being here. We know you have a choice in where you spend your time, and we are just thankful that you decided to share some time with us on this morning. Um, we feel blessed and privileged to have you here. Um, you should have received a welcome bag. Um, upon entering on this morning, there should be a connect card that Kiki was talking about. Um, please fill that connect card out for us so we can connect with you outside of service. Um, if you need prayer, you can use that card and you can also text um, the number that will show periodically throughout um, service. And we will be praying on tomorrow morning and on Wednesday as well, um, throughout, as well as throughout the week. Um, you can also use it if God move up on your heart and you are looking for a church home and you decide to be a member here at St. Paul, you can use that card or you can text as well to indicate that or if you decide to give your life to Christ. Amen. But we want to make sure that we are able to connect with you. So please, if you will, just fill it out and um, pass it to our ushers on the way out. Amen. Amen. St. Paul, give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. Amen. Brother Coleman was talking about our church anniversary being today, um, the second Sunday in April. Um, you saw the shirts up there, 138 years. Amen. Okay, I'm going to try that again because some churches didn't make it one year. So God has had his hand on St. Paul. Now we get it. Now we're getting it. God has had his hand on St. Paul for 138 years. Amen. 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 Can we do a little bit better than that? I mean, 138 years years God has been faithful God has been kind and God has shown favor you know now this is what get me when Beyonce come out we go crazy but I'm gonna leave that alone I'm gonna leave that alone amen we get to acting like everybody else is the best thing since sliced bread but when we talking about what God has done the impact that he has had on this community through this church. That's something to celebrate. We choose to celebrate it on May, um, the first Sunday in May, because that is homecoming. And a lot of the people that Brooke Holman talk about um, that have family that have moved away, they all come back. And we want to include them in our celebration. Um, amen. Amen. So I'm asking that you do this. I'm asking that you do this on this morning. Get a shirt. Get a t-shirt. Get a t-shirt. Get a t-shirt. This is our way of celebrating, commemorating what God has done. Has done. And then you have a keepsake um, as far as from year to year. So go ahead and go ahead and do that. And God has done some great things through this church for this community. 
Um, I mean, historical things from judges to the first black police chief in Olive Branch, so many great and wonderful things. St. Paul serving as a school for a while for the community, now still serving as an early education, early childhood education institution um, and looking to expand and do more. So God has been kind and faithful, um, but also impactful through this place. And we're all a part of that. And we should be proud of that and we should celebrate it. Amen? Amen. We have to act like God has blessed us. Amen? Amen. So I just wanted to share that um, and want us to know who we are. We are St. Paul. Amen. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. And for that reason, we should be thankful. We, we should be thankful. Amen? Amen. I just wanted to share that. Also wanted to share this. Um, we had not talked about it, but the month of March for Resurrection Weekend, we fed a thousand people. Amen. Amen. Uh, we donated. We donated to Memphis Union Mission um, to make sure that we did our part um, in feeding those that are in need. And it's something that we want to continue to do. We want to continue to do it, just not on special days and special weekends, but we want to do it because that's what we are supposed to do. Amen? That's what we are supposed to do. Um, so I just want you to know that your giving is not in vain, uh, but we don't, want to, we don't want to just give. We also want to start back serving. Amen? And we want to put the two together where we want to give and we want to go and serve. And you're going to be hearing some more about that coming shortly where we'll have some places that we are giving to. Um, but also creating the opportunity for us to get out and serve. And it'll be a great thing for our young people, those middle schoolers and high schoolers to see, as they would say, that everything ain't sweet out there. Sometimes we get confused sitting on the hill like everybody got it like that. That's not the case. And we develop a sense of entitlement as if that's what it's supposed to be. But sometimes we need to be reminded that in the blink of an eye, some things can change. Amen. 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 And we have to have the attitude that Christ had that we come to serve and not to be served. Amen. Our mission, our vision is being inwardly strong in the word of God, but outwardly focused on the work of God. We got to do something outside of these doors. So we want to create the opportunity for us to serve in several capacities, not only in our outreach, but also with evangelism. Um, and there are some other things uh, we have with us today. Uh, with Kenya Clayton with, uh, with Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm going to ask her to give us about a three-minute um, just intro to what that is and um, who they are. Um, they will be meeting at St. Paul on Tuesday, I think it is, um, and sharing information with the community. Um, we are called to impact the community. Amen? And we want to, we want to definitely, definitely do that. So, Wakenya, if you would come now and just share, thank you so much for being here with us. Amen. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Good morning, St. Paul. Uh, to your esteemed and committed shepherd, I want to say thank you so much, Pastor Lee, for opening the doors of St. Paul um, to us at the Southern Poverty Law Center, but also to this community. Um, congratulations on 138 years of worship and fellowship. Um, to my pastor, I got to do protocol correctly, um, Pastor Broderick Kenyon Hutchins of Mount Abel Missionary Baptist Church in Canton, Mississippi, I bring you formal greetings. 
Um, Proverbs 31, 8 and 9 says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And that's what you all have been doing for the past 138 years. So I want to say thank you for that. At the Southern Poverty Law Center, we are committed to being a catalyst for racial justice in the Deep South and beyond. And so what we've been doing here in Mississippi, I've been the director for three years. And part of my commitment in coming back home has been to really make sure that our communities know and understand their power and that we don't give up easily. We are definitely in a very interesting time in our country. There's a lot going on around us. And the only way that we can stop that is that we build power and we push back. So this year is the 60th anniversary of Freedom Summer. And I know many of you may know what Freedom Summer is, but it was a movement that was started in the 60s where young people flooded into the state of Mississippi to register voters. We're taking, we're picking up that mantle, we're reigniting that fight, and we're inviting everyone into that fight with us. We have a goal of reaching 60,000 folks right here in the state of Mississippi. We saw how close we came last year in terms of changing the culture of this place. We believe that it is possible, but it's not possible without the folks in this room and the people in this community. So over the next couple of days, we're gonna be here in North Mississippi. We were in Holly Springs yesterday and Friday. Now we're over here in South Haven. We'll be in Olive Branch and some other parts of, of the area, just speaking to folks in the community about what's going on and also providing some tools for how we can change what's going on. So we hope that you all join us on Tuesday at St. Paul for our community me meeting. We're gonna be listening, we're gonna be dialoguing, and we're gonna be strategizing. And so I thank you again, Pastor Lee, for opening the doors for us to do that. And I look forward to working and seeing all of y'all on Tuesday night. We're gonna feed y'all good too. <laughs> thank you. And it'll be at six o'clock, fellowship hall, right? in the fellowship hall. That's amen, amen, amen. I'm listening. One other thing, our men, our men, let's not forget about um, the Redbirds game, our fellowship. Let's get together and have a good time. Um, there, again, $33 um, for a ticket and for food. Um, that's a really, really, really good, really good price. Amen. So please get registered, get registered. Um, I think that they have to have the numbers, the numbers in and the commitment pretty soon. Amen. Um, so we're going to go ahead as a church and meet the commitment for the minimum. Amen. So because I know that we can sometimes get caught in our busy lives and forget to register. Um, so we're going to meet the commitment so the fellowship stay open and stay available. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and do that and make sure we're going out and having a good time. Um, it's good for brethren um, to fellowship one with, one with another. Amen? Amen. And then congratulations. We have a, um, several of our small groups, I think three that are finishing up um, pretty soon here, some today and um, some in the next week or so. Um, but congratulations to that the women's group, the men's group. I think the singles will be finishing up um, shortly as well. So congratulations to them. We thank God for them picking up that mantle and carrying on and moving forward with things that help um, in discipleship. Amen. 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 Let me share this. Let me share this. All of our new members, all of our new members, um, we will not start our new member class on this week. We'll start next week. We'll start next week. I just need a moment to catch my breath. Uh, amen. Amen. Um, yesterday was a tough day. Um, pastors don't always get the same opportunity to mourn and grieve when we lose members. When we lose members, it's like losing family. Amen. And sometimes you're getting hit back to back with things and that it takes a toll on you. Um, and so you all, uh, whether you know it or not, I count you all as family and love you all as family. So when something happens, um, 
I have to put aside what I'm dealing with emotionally behind it to be of support to others. Amen. And, and that's what God called me to do, and I don't have a problem with it. I just, just give me today, amen, <laughs> give me today and let me uh, get, you know, get in order what I need to get in order so I can be ready um, to continue to push forward. Just a quick note, we are still pushing, we are still pushing um, towards that first Sunday, amen, we're still pushing. So y'all keep praying, keep praying. Uh, we had a construction meeting on Thursday, and we are putting all that we can into it to get home for homecoming. We really are. So we're praying that we... We're praying that we make that date. Things have to line up and fall in place for us to do it. We're trusting God in it. Um, and I'll try to keep you updated if there's any slip in that date at all. Um, I'll try to keep providing those updates, but I'm praying that we don't. Uh, Brown has been so kind. Pastor Orr has been so amazing. Amen. We couldn't ask anything more um, than what they've already done for us. Um, but I know we're all ready to go home. Amen. 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 And so we're close. Keep praying. Um, we'll keep pushing, and we'll see what happens. Amen? amen. Let's give our men a hand. They, amen. Amen. We're going to ask now that they come back with song, and then after that, we'll be ready for the word of God.
want them to go anywhere but see I owe the Lord wait a minute not just for what he's done for me but see there's been some folks I've been in prayer for some children I've been praying for Deanna Watts, her grandbaby Summer, that you've heard us talking about. In the hospital, had to be placed in a coma. Kidneys threatening to fail. On dialysis while she was in the hospital. But then I get a text message that says my grandbaby coming home. And coming home without dialysis. See, I owe the Lord not only for what he's done for me, but I owe the Lord for what he's done for other folks. See, I've learned to praise him not just when I'm blessed, but when I see him move in somebody else's life, because I know that if he can do it for them, then he can do it for me. And so I can draw encouragement in my situation because I see him less folk in their situation. So yeah, I owe the Lord. Come on, brother. Every now and then, you just need to praise him. Every now and then, you need to magnify him. Every now and then, you need to lift him up.
let the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thine sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer speak Lord so that men may hear and understand speak so that lives may change and your name may be glorified now Lord you and only you know what you have called me here to do this day ask that I may sit down so that you may stand up ask that I may hush up so that you may speak up ask that I may disappear so that you may appear and I will be careful to give your name the glory, the honor and the praise it's in your son Jesus name that I pray amen let us say amen again to these my sons and co-laborers in the gospel uh, Pastor Parti is always uh, always good to see you have you um, here with us we just thank God for you Minister Dono Mr. Cochran and Mr. Blackwell as well as Minister Mason just so thankful for them our officers our deacons amen we certainly thank God for them and for them serving our ushers amen amen we're thankful for their continued commitment our media ministry security ministry all of our ministries that are serving on today most especially our music ministry and this mighty male chorus amen amen we're just so thankful for them uh, for Tony I call him senior and all that he's doing um, in relationship with our musicians we're just thankful amen and then to all of you my brothers and sisters in Christ I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus, saying it is good. It's good to be here. One more time, God has blessed us and given us the opportunity to try and get it right. And since this is a day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice in it, for it, and about it. Amen. Amen. Stand and go with me to the gospel recorded by Luke. The gospel recorded by Luke chapter 7. Verses 18 through 28. The gospel recorded by Luke chapter 7 verses 18 through 28. I'm reading from the New King James translation you'll find these words then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things and John calling two of his disciples to him sent them to Jesus saying are you the coming one or do we look for another when the men had come to him they said John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? In that very hour, he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. When the messengers of John had departed, he began to speak to the multitudes concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken by the wind but what did you go out to see 
a man clothed in soft garments. Indeed, those who are gorgeously apparelled, apparel, and live in luxury are in king's courts. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. For I say to you, among those born of woman, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Amen. You may be seated. Do you all remember the show that used to come on that was called Ripley's Believe It or Not? One of my favorite childhood shows in the early to mid 80s, believe it or not, captured my attention and then kicked my imagination into full gear. The show was based on an American franchise founded by Robert Ripley. He dealt in bizarre events and items so strange and unusual that they challenged reality. The show left us as viewers questioning if what we had seen was really real. But the show, in my mind, summed up what life is all about. At some point, you're either going to believe or you're not. At some point, we all have to make this choice to believe or not. See, the decision to believe or not to believe can and will change the trajectory of your life. See, when it comes to Jesus, at some point, you either have to believe or not. It, it, it's not something that you can be on the fence about. You, you have to go ahead and believe. Now, now, now watch this. Not when things are good. Oh, it's easy to believe when things are, are good. But when things are horrible, when things are terrible, when the things that are happening to you are unbelievable and unfavorable, can you believe then? I'm talking about when your head is on the chopping block. Like John's head was on the chopping block. I'm talking about when the enemy seems to be winning. I'm talking about when there's an eviction notice on your door. When you show up at work and you get a pink slip on your job. Can you believe then? Are y'all in here with me? I'm talking about when the one you supposed to be co-parenting with has turned out to be crazy. Can't be counted on. Can't believe him for anything. When you realize the child is a blessing, but the one that you lay down with is the worst mistake you ever made in your life. Can I talk in here? Or do I need to dance around and, and walk on eggshells? I'm talking about when you look at them and can't stand them. I'm talking about when your child is acting like you haven't taught them anything at home. They've grown up and when you look at them, you don't even recognize them because you know that the stuff they're putting out is not the stuff that you put in them. I'm talking about when the marriage is over, but you're still living in the house. 
in public is still putting on the face. But you know that there is nothing left. There is nothing there. There is nothing there. You're in disbelief that divorce is right around the corner. But the truth is divorce is right around the corner. You feel like a failure. You feel like you messed up. You feel like you've let your children down because you can't keep this together. I'm talking about when disease enter your body. And the doctor tells you to get your affairs in order. Tell you it's time for you to start talking to the family because there's nothing else that he can do. I'm talking about when grief, depression, and a broken heart makes you a prisoner in your own, your own mind. And then make you a prisoner in your own home. Where you want to get up, you want to get out, but the grief and the depression have such a hold on you that all you can do is lay back down. Are, are y'all in here with me? I'm talking about when your past have such a hold on you that you can't even live in your present, let alone even think about your future. Talking about when childhood trauma comes back and cuts you down every time you feel like you are about to stand up. I'm talking about when you have to ask yourself the question, why me? Why did I have to go through this? Why am I having to deal with all of this? Why did this all fall on my shoulders? You've been faithful. You've been kind. You've been loving. You've done what God has said for you to do. And it still happened, still happened to you. You prayed about it. But it doesn't seem that God did anything about it. Doesn't seem like he's doing anything about it. And doesn't seem like he will do anything about it. Do you still believe? Can you finally accept? That a lack of deliverance does not take away from his deity. Can you still believe that he's still God? And God all by himself. Has your faith grown past seeing Jesus just as a gift giver? Just as a miracle worker. Just as a deliverer. Have you grown past looking at Jesus as someone that's supposed to be your personal bell man? That's supposed to just open doors for you all the time. Have you grown past that point where you can still believe? Have you grown to the place where you can say, not my will, but your will, your will be done. And watch this, and then mean it. Not just paying lip service because it's good church rhetoric, but your heart has accepted that it's not about you, it's about him. So it's not your will, but his will. Have you grown to a place where you can find confidence and contentment in each and every situation in your life, regardless of what the situation may be? 
I mean, that's what Paul was talking about in Philippians um, chapter 4, verses 10 through 13, when he said, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lack opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. In other words, I don't care what my situation is, as long as I got God, I know that I can make it through. Help your faith grow to the place where you believe like that. Are you there yet? Can you be content in all things? Can you be cast down and crucified but not conquered? Let me ask that question again. Let me ask that question again. Can you be cast down, crucified by others, but yet not allow yourself to be conquered because you know the word of God tells you that you are more than a conqueror and you believe his word more than what you believe the one that's standing in your way. Have you grown to that place yet? Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellent of power of the power may be of God and not of us. Watch it now. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. In other words, I may be going through some stuff, but my stuff hadn't taken me out. My stuff hasn't detoured my faith. I still believe that he is God, and even if he don't do it, it doesn't mean that he can't do it. So I've learned to stand on this fact that yet though he slay me, I'm going to continue to trust in the Lord because I'd rather go through my situation with them than to go through it without him. Will you still believe and have faith in these moments in life? Will you believe when you cannot believe that he didn't change the situation in your life? Will you continue to believe? That's, that's what John had to do here. That's, that's what John had to do. John the Baptist we are talking about. That's who he is. This is what he had to do. I mean, Jesus identified him as the one that was prophesied about, the one that was going to come before him, the one that was going to preach before him and make the path straight, get the ground ready for him to come through. I mean, the forerunner of Jesus, this is the position that he finds himself in. He finds himself on the chopping block. But still, Acts 2 believe. Y'all not in here with me. I got to get ready to get out of here. Y'all not in here with me. But, 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 but here, here, here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing. The text starts with these words. Then the disciples of John, John locked up in prison, waiting there. The disciples of John reported to him Concerning all these things. Got one question. What is all these things? That's my question. What all these things? So when you read all of chapter 7, chapter 7 starts with a centurion servant being sick unto death. And being sick unto death 
Some of the Jews went to Jesus asking for Jesus to heal their master servant. And guess what Jesus did? He healed the servant. Now, if that wasn't enough, there was a widow named, a widow in Nain, whose son was dead and being processioned through the gates. Jesus showed up and raised the boy from the dead. I'm talking about in the same chapter, just a few verses earlier. But then when Jesus got to John's verse, with John locked up, did I mention that it's his cousin? His cousin's head on the chopping block. His cousin having some questions. Wanting to know, are you the one? Where he could have freed John. He left John right where he was. Can you still believe when you are watching Jesus bless other people in your chapter but then leaving you in the same situation? I mean, just a few verses ago, you saw him move and heal somebody, but he didn't heal you, didn't heal your family. Can you still believe in that situation? Because that's the kind of faith that God is looking for. He's looking for those that say, even if he don't do it, I know that he's still... He calls us to truly have faith. See, without that kind of faith, it's impossible to please God. See, we want to reduce him to just our personal servant that's supposed to answer all of our prayers the way we want him to answer our prayers. And then when we get to that place, we're no longer telling him to be God. We're saying that we're God and he needs to do what we say. And he's saying it's not about what you say, it's about what he says. And when you have faith, you have to accept it even if you don't like it. Can you still believe when you fall into those hard Situations that we are seeing John in right now, it lead us to ask the question, do you believe it or not? And at some point in our lives, all of us wrestle with that situation of believing it or, or not. Okay, I'm not talking to my, my super saints and my extraordinary Christians. I'm not talking to y'all, I'm talking about us regular folk that every now and then look a little cross-eyed at God like, okay, now what is it that you doing and why are you doing this? Why did you let me get into this situation? I know you could do something about the situation. Why haven't you moved on my behalf? I'm talking to us regular folk that have had some questions and some concerns and want to know, do you hear me? ones that when you're truthful you saying now I saw you bless that joker and I know them <laughs> can you believe when you feel like you're in a losing battle that's what we're talking about 
Because even when it seems like you're in a losing battle, we are called to believe because we are to walk by faith and not by not by sight. Jesus holds John the Baptist up as one that couldn't be any closer to him. One that could not work any better or more for him. As one that had sacrificed all for him. One that was out there in lowly clothing. Not in a temple. But on the backside of the wilderness. Crying out, telling somebody about Jesus. He holds him up. To tell us that everything is not always going to go your way. But it doesn't take anything from him because it didn't go your way. We have to check ourselves sometimes. We get to acting like we are more than Jesus. Even Jesus cried out, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. The word said, not my will, but your will be done. We have to understand at some point we have to submit to his will even though we don't like it. So he holds up John the Baptist. Let me get out of here. He holds up John the Baptist and says, look at John. Look at my first cousin who had some question because he found himself on the chopping block. I, I, I mean, he sent for me, but he's still right there. You see, if we're going to believe, we got to remain steadfast through the highs and lows of life. We got to remain steadfast. We can't allow ourselves to get too high and we can't allow ourselves to get too low. We have to remain unmovable regardless of what the situation is in the season that we are in in our lives. Does not the Bible say to everything there is a season? So are we not to receive what we perceive to be the bad of God, are we only to get the good? See, to remain steadfast, you have to understand that hardship doesn't mean that there is something wrong with your relationship. See, sometimes we take hardship to mean, to mean that there's something wrong with our relationship with God. It doesn't have to be anything wrong with your relationship with God for you to experience hardship in life. Sometimes hardship is just a part of your journey. Going to remain steadfast. We have to have conversations when we are in shaky situations. I mean, John the Baptist sent somebody to have a conversation with Jesus when he was in a shaky situation in his life. We got to learn who to talk to when our heads are on the chopping block. Sometimes we are talking to the wrong folk. You need to talk to some people that will go to Jesus for you and then bring you his word back, not their word back. John sent some folk to Jesus to have a conversation on his behalf because he was in a shaky situation. Ships when they hit rough water and bad weather, they drop anchor. 
so that they don't get off course. If they don't drop anchor, what will end up happening, the rough water, the strong wind will blow them off course. And could it be that we get blown off course because we hadn't dropped our anchor? We haven't dropped. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. We haven't dropped that God is my refuge and strength of very present help in trouble. We haven't dropped. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come at my help. We haven't dropped now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think. You have to set your anchor. going to remain steadfast through the highs and lows in life. At some point, you have to drop your anchor and be steadfast through the highs and lows. Understanding that hardship doesn't mean there's something wrong with your relationship. Understanding that Jesus died so that you can have a conversation when you are in shaky and sticky situations. Drop anchor. I know you don't like where you're at, but drop anchor. Don't like what you're going through, but drop anchor. Tired of sickness and illness, still drop anchor. Somebody will tell you that he's able. And all you need to know is that he is, he's able. If you're going to believe, you got to remain steadfast through the highs and lows of life. You have to drop anchor. And not only must you remain steadfast through the highs and lows of life, but you have to remember what you have seen from the Lord throughout your life. Sometimes we get amnesia. We get spiritual amnesia. You do know that traumatic experiences can cause amnesia. You get hit upside the head hard enough. I'm going somewhere right there. It can cause amnesia when we find ourselves going through traumatic situation or the enemy has hit us hard upside the head sometimes don't y'all look at me like that it will make us forget who he is and what he can do. Come here, Saul, who was serving the living God, had all of the armies of Israel up on the hill, but when the giant came in the valley, he turned and ran because of fear. This man that stood head and shoulders above everybody else, don't look at me like that. Come here, Elijah. The prophet that called fire from heaven? The one that had killed false prophets? Come here, Elijah. When Jezebel said to him the same thing you did to them, I'm about to do to you, and he ran for the hills, wished that he was dead. Come on in here, Elijah. I don't care how great you are. There are some things that will hit you and make you forget. But when that happened, you got to quickly snap back to yourself and remember who the Lord is. 
Watch it in the text. Watch it in the text. Watch it in the text. I mean, Jesus didn't even answer the question. Watch it in the text. He, he didn't answer the question. John asked, are you the one? Or should we look for another? Jesus didn't say, I'm the one. Jesus didn't say, look no further. Jesus didn't say, I'm it. No, 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 no. The text says, that very hour, he began to heal folks. Begin to cast out demons. Are y'all hearing me in here? He turned to his disciples and said to them, now you go back and tell John exactly what you've seen. The lame walk, lepers were cleansed. Go back and tell them what you've seen. The blind can see, the deaf can hear. In other words, can't nobody do it like Jesus. In other words, he was reminding John was saying to John, don't you forget who I am. And every now and then we need a reminder. We need to remember how we felt when we first met Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. See, when John first met Jesus, when he was in his mother's womb, the Bible says that he jumped for joy because he was in the presence of Jesus. Then you need to remember not only how you felt, but you need to remember what you said because that was John that said that he was not fit to even loose the sandals on his feet. You got to remember what you said, what the Holy Spirit revealed to you. When John said, there go the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. Don't just remember what you felt. You got to remember what you said. Are y'all in here with me? You got to remember what God said about him. So you got to remember what you heard. The word of God says when he was baptizing Jesus in Jordan, that the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And God said, this is my beloved son. Oh, glory be to God in whom I'm well pleased. You got to remember what the word said about him. He's Alpha and Omega. Wish I had a witness in here. The beginning and the end. The bomb of Gilead. The bright and morning star. He's my way maker. My burden bearer. My bridge over troubled water. Anybody know my Jesus? And know what the word said about him. He's my conquering king. My way out of no way. Anybody know my Jesus? Anybody believe in my Jesus? Anybody know he'll do it? Just hold on. What he can't pull you out of. He'll show up, see you through it. And I'm here right now. Not because he pulled me out of some stuff. But he walked with me. He talked with me. And told me I was his own. Anybody know Jesus, Mary's baby, the one that died, but he didn't stay dead. Early one Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody know he got up? Say yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Has he been good to you? Better than you've been to yourself. Say yeah! 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 Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yeah! Believe, believe in spite of your situation. Remain steadfast and remember who 
he has been. We're here today because of who he was on yesterday, who he was on last night, and who he was on this morning. Listen, you may be here right now, and you want to give your life to Christ. The Word of God says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Word of God says that there is none righteous, not even one. The Word makes clear that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Someone may ask, where can I find this life? The word of God is clear that he who has the son has life. And he who does not have the son does not have, does not have life. Well, how do I get his son? The word tell us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. How do I get his son? All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God that he died for the forgiveness of your sins. And on the third day morning, God raised him from the dead. The word of God says that's all it is to it. Truly confess. Truly believe. Ask him to enter into your heart. He'll save your soul. You can come down right now or maybe you want to text or use your card, it's your choice. But whatever, don't miss this opportunity to get on the right side of things. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Our male chorus is getting ready to come. Maybe you're looking for a church home. We would love to have you here at St. Paul. You can use your welcome card, your connection card, or you can text the number on the screen. And just let us know that you would like to be a member here. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you need rededication. But while our male chorus sing, will you come? Will you come? Today is a good day. Today is the right day. Come forward. Text us or fill out your card. to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. In that name, y'all. Jesus. So much power in that name, y'all. Jesus. There is power in the name, y'all.
Good afternoon, St. Paul. On today, we have Miss Ruby Heron coming for prayer today. Amen. Let's make sure we are keeping Miss Ruby in prayer. Her family has gone through so much. I had to deal with so much death over the last month, month and a half. Um, and death is not easy. I know we know where believers go, but that doesn't mean you don't feel the weight once they are gone. And we got to stop talking to people like they're supposed to hide their grief. Amen. Depth is hard. Parting is hard. Um, even though we know that God is real, he's able, he's capable. Brother Al's family, Brother Wiggins as well. Uh, let's make sure we are praying one for another. Let us pray. Gracious and kind Father, we just come now. Father, thanking you for being God and God all by yourself. God, you are maker, creator, keeper, sustainer of all things. Father, there's nothing impossible with you and there's nothing too hard for you. Yes. Father, we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. So, Father, we are coming to you now because you told us to. Father, your word teach us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Father, the truth of the matter is sometimes the way get hard and the load get heavy. But Father, we are glad that you told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So Father, we are coming and crying out as humbly as we know how. Father, we are praying for Miss Ruby and all that her family has gone through. Father, they need you right now. Your word declares that your Holy Spirit, he's a comforter, that he's a helper, one that will catch us when we feel like we're falling. 
Father, I just come praying right now that you wrap your arms around not only Miss Ruby's family, the Johnson family, the Wiggins family. Father, some are remembering the loss of a loved one at this time of the year in years past. And sometimes that can feel just as real today as it did in that moment. Comfort hearts, Father. Your word declares that you're able to give peace that surpass all understanding. You may not remove the tears, but Father, give them peace. Allow them to feel your presence. And Father, eventually through the tears, be able to smile thinking about the warm memories that they share. Help right now, Father. The days that they feel like they can't go on or the clouds are hanging a lot lower than normal. Walk with them, Father. Remind them that when they don't feel like moving or can't move, that you are still moving. But then, Father, there are others that are dealing with sickness, dealing with illness, others that are dealing with all manner of problems, all kinds of situations. We're glad on today that you can handle it all. And you can handle it all at the same time. So take care of your people, Father. Keep them and watch over them. It's in your son Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Let us say amen again. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. What a wonderful God we serve. Again, again, new members, new members we We'll start class on next week. Uh, my apologies for the late notice, uh, but just give me a moment to catch my breath uh, through everything that um, has been going on and everything um, that we are having to deal with. So um, God is able, just hang in there with us, amen? Amen, again, let us not, let us not forget um, about the baseball game, your t-shirts, um, amen. Um, let me share this. I want to touch this as well. We, we will have summer camp this summer, Lord's willing. But we just don't want to have summer camp. We want to try and bridge the gap for our young people um, and things that they may miss um, on summer break or that they may slip a little bit on. So we're looking for um, those teachers um, that's uh, your area of interest or specialization in reading and mathematics. We want to tutor twice a week. Uh, make sure we are helping um, our young people. Um, we are bridging the gap over the summer so that they are ready to excel in the next school year. Um, so if you're here, if you're watching, if you know someone um, that would like to um, just tutor a couple times a week, uh, I think we've outlined Tuesday and Thursday, but we can kind of schedule that to fit whatever the schedule need to be. But we want to be able to support parents and our young people by doing that. I think camp is going up to the seventh grade this year. Um, and so we really want to be impactful in what we do, amen? So we need help, we need tutors, um, teachers that special, that specialize, have specializations in mathematics or endorsements in mathematics and uh, reading. Um, listen, please, please reach out. I think I see Miss Daphne back there. Um, wave your hand. I, we sh there you go. Amen. Um, so please, please let her know if you know of anyone. Um, we are looking. We are looking and we need you. Let's get ready to get out of here. God is so good. Amen. Amen.
Let us bow our heads. Gracious and kind Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Father, we come praying that your word fell on fertile ground and not on hardened hearts, that we can go out and tell a dying world about a living God that can do anything except fail. Father, we choose to believe on today. In spite of our situation or what we're going through, Father, we still declare that you are God and you are God all by yourself. Father, we just thank you for what you've already done and what you will continue to do. Father, we just come praying now and just asking that you just continue um, to lift up your countenance to us. Father, continue to make your face shine and smile upon us. Father, bless these, your people, Father. Take care of your people, Father. And now, Father, as we get ready to dismiss from this place, Father, dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Father, we ask for traveling grace, Father. We come praying that we find our destinations as well as they were, Father, when we left them. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now and forevermore. And every heart said, Amen.